your boy, Okino. Today we're going to be restoring an original GameCube controller. As you can see here, we barely have the logo still showing. It's been worn down over the past few years. I guess you can say this controller's been smashed. All bad jokes aside, we're going to go ahead and do a comparison between an original GameCube controller and a knockoff GameCube controller. Let's go ahead and start with this one. Knockoff GameCube controller sticks yellow after a few years, and they have more of a plastic feel than a rubberized feel. They also do not have the logo here. The buttons raise more on this controller, and they use four prong screws, or a Phillips screwdriver, to open it up. The Z button is super noisy. And there's no locking mechanism when you press the trigger all the way down. Going on to the GameCube controller, it has a more rubberized stick. They do not yellow. The buttons are lower on the controller. There is a locking mechanism. The Z button is silent. And they use three prong screws in the back and as you can see we have our Nintendo logo and our GameCube logo. If you're a man of class you know that the GameCube controller, the original one, is the way to go unless you want to be like all those other kids with the pumped up kicks but that dog ain't gonna hunt in this house. First thing we're gonna need to do is open up the GameCube controller and I'll go ahead and open up this one so you can see a side-by-side -side comparison on the differences. Let's get started. What you need for this project is a bowl to hold all of your equipment when taking the controller apart so you don't lose anything, 600 grit sandpaper, primer to primer your controller after sanding it down, a color of your choice in spray paint, and clear coat. I'm using a rim gloss clear coat it is less prone to get scuffed when dropping your controller and you will need a tri-spoke screwdriver i have a screwdriver set here that contains that bit you can also get it at any local hardware store As you can see now, we have both controllers open. We can see some of the main differences within the circuit boards. So super neat with the original GameCube controller. Not so neat with the aftermarket one. Got some solder leading to some other circuits over here. Not really sure what this big blob is. Not even sure what the whole CPU section is, as you can see right here. I'm not sure where that is on this controller. Some of the main differences you'll see in this controller right here is the buttons. Not as filling in the aftermarket one compared to the original GameCube controller one. People who use the original GameCube controller can tell you that there is more weight to the original one than the aftermarket ones. We can see that they do use more plastic in their buttons. And that's the reason why they might be more responsive. Now that we see the main differences in the circuit boards and the controllers, we're gonna go ahead and uh, get rid of this one and start with the sanding process on this controller right here. Now that we have the 
the whole circuit board out of the original GameCube controller, we're going to go ahead and start with the sanding process. We'll be using our 600 grit sandpaper on the controller. We do not need to sand it that much. As long as you get it all scuffed up, the primer will take care of the rest. Let's go ahead and get started. controller sanded what we can go ahead and do is rinse it off with soap and water clean between all the crevices we'll wait for it to dry and then we're going to go ahead and start with the priming process now that we have sanded down and washed our controller you see there should be no shiny parts on this controller if you see any shiny parts just repeat the process of sanding it down on that specific part and then go ahead and wash it wait for it to dry again now that we've done all this we're gonna go ahead and go ahead with the priming process the priming process also acts as a filler to fill in any scratches that you have on your controller as you can see right here I would have ahead and made a little platform to lay my controller on this is totally optional you don't need to make it. I made mine from a wire hanger. Let's go ahead and get started. I went ahead and prepped my surface. I am doing this indoors. The only reason I'm doing this indoors is because it is super windy outside today. I do not recommend doing it indoors. Do it outside at a well ventilated area. Um, as long as it's not windy. So let's go ahead and get started. I went ahead and shook my uh, primer for two minutes straight. You want to go ahead and do that. It is an important process to get the paint mixed up and uh, to prevent any clots from going onto your controller. All right, so I'll go ahead and fast forward this part. We have started our first coat. You're going to want to let that sit for about 10 minutes. Um, if you see any imperfections or any dust on the controller, go ahead and take the time after it's done drying to sand that out, rinse it off, and then go ahead and repeat the second process, and that's the second coat of primer. I noticed a small imperfection in this right hand corner. I went ahead and sanded it down, rinsed it off, and now we're going to go ahead and start with the second coat. applying our second coat. If you think your controller is good at this time, you can go and continue to the paint. I'm going to go and put a third coat because I do have some deep scratches on the sides right here and they're almost about filled up. There was no imperfections in this last coat so I did not have to go ahead and sand it down and re-rinse it. We'll just go ahead and continue to the third one. Hello guys, I'm actually outside today. 
Um, it's not as windy today, so we're going to go ahead and be spray painting the rest of this outside. Um, we are finished with the primering process, and we can go ahead and move on to the paint process. So let's go ahead and get started. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to put your first coat, not too much, so that it will not drip. And then we'll go and wait about 15 minutes. You want to wait longer because it takes longer for paint to dry than the primer. Let's go ahead and get started. As you can see, this is our first coat. We did not put that much because we do not want any of this to go ahead and drip. It's a nice turquoise color. It's laying very nicely. Dupy color is the type of paint I'm using again. It's a very great paint it's for automotive. Let's go ahead and wait 15 minutes and we'll put on our second coat. So 15 minutes has passed. We're going to go ahead and do the second coat. That might need be the only other coat that we need other than the clear coat. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to go ahead and try to get the bottom of the controller a little bit more. Because when we're spraying like this, we're mostly getting the top. But there's still some, a little bit of gray at the bottom. finished applying the second coat it seems like that's all it's going to need now we're gonna go ahead and let this rest for about 20 minutes give it a good cure then we'll go ahead and do the clear coat I went ahead and let the paint cure everything after this point is going to be optional until we get to the clear coat I went ahead and cut out a little sticker since we don't have the GameCube logo anymore I'm gonna go ahead and put this sticker right here then we're going to go ahead and spray it over it with the clear effects and then the clear coat to seal it all in. If your sticker has a gloss on the top, make sure to sand it down a little with the 600 grit sandpaper so the paint can stick. Let's go ahead and get started. sticker on it's looking good as you can see right here it's pretty flush and like I said I did sand it down before now we're gonna go ahead and apply the effects if you are on the clear coat this would be the same step you're gonna to want to do a very very light coat so that you get a bit of grain at the top so the next coat can stick really well for the clear effects we're gonna do three coats maybe even four because the first one's going to be very light it's recommended to do three to get the maximum amount of sparkle so let's go ahead and get started we've got the first coat on and we've let it dry for 15 minutes we're going to go ahead and apply the second one we can go a little bit heavier this time since the sticker is now tacky. Okay, let's get started. The second coat has cured. Now we're going to go ahead and start on the third coat. I think that's going to be enough from what I can see right now. But uh, we'll go and see after this one is done. Let's go ahead and get this started. The third coat is finally finished. It's finished drying as well. What we're going to go ahead and do is clear coat the top of this so the Clear effects does not get damaged if you do drop the controller you can just buff it out and it'll be that top layer of clear coat the rim clear coat so that nothing will be affected here I'll go ahead and show you what this looks like with light it does look good right now but let me just show you the effect Dry now. We're going to go ahead and use 
it's the wheel gloss clear coat. This will protect it further from future damage or any normal wear and tear from actually holding the controller. Let's go ahead and get started. Has finished drying we're going to go ahead and apply a second one we might do a third one we're going for a high gloss finish we'll just see how the second one turns out so far let's get started with the clear coat. I'm gonna now let this cure overnight. The controller has finished curing. We waited about 12 hours overnight, like I said. We'll go ahead and check out the result right now. As you can see, it is super glossy. We're gonna go and take it outside so I can show you the effect and the reflection of the gloss. We're going to go and put the controller back together. I do need to give you some key points before starting. Super important. I'm looking at the back of the actual controller. Make sure that these two sticks, this one, this one, are all the way up. So they can go into their place once you put them back on the back of the controller. Alright. controller together it's pretty nice like I said before I'm not going to be using this backing I'll be using a different one later on I let you went ahead and saw the effect and the whole GameCube controller put together please like follow and subscribe in future videos, I'm going to be making custom epoxy buttons to go ahead and replace these buttons. And I'll be switching out the triggers. And I'll be switching out the back. These are going to be separate videos and show how-tos. So please, like, follow, and subscribe. I'll see you later again. It's Okina.